This video will show how to clip or constrain a 3D model using bounding elevation surfaces. This feature can be used to restrict your model to a desired geologic or hydrologic unit. In this video, we will use clipping to display arsenic concentrations in the upper aquifer of our site. We do not want to show arsenic concentrations within underlying aquifers and we certainly do not want to show arsenic concentrations occurring above the water table. You may have seen presentations in the past where groundwater data is improperly plotted above the water table or even above the ground surface. This is a surefire way to discredit your presentation before you even get started. Rockworks uses grid files with the GRD extension to clip a 3D solid model based on Z elevations. The 2D grid file and the 3D solid model need to have the same XY minimum and maximum dimensions and the same node spacing for the clipping to work. Let's start by creating elevation grid files that define the bounding surfaces for the 3D solid model. We will generate a grid file for the water table and one for the bottom of the upper aquifer. Under the aquifers menu, select Plan Map. Next, select the upper aquifer, which in our model is named Aquifer 1. We will click on the gray colored Time Filter Options button and select water levels that were measured on February 14th of 2007. We will also select the superface elevations as the map type. This tells the program to use the upper surface or water table elevation data to create our first bounding surface map. Clicking on the gray colored surface modeling options button opens the gridding options dialog box. We will select inverse distance for the gridding algorithm and make sure that the grid dimensions are based on project dimensions so this grid will match the horizontal dimensions of the 3D model. We will also check the contour lines, borehole locations, and border options. Then, click on the process button and Rockworks generates the grid file for the top of Aquifer 1, which represents our water table surface. While we're here, let's go ahead and create a grid model that represents the base of the aquifer. This is accomplished by changing map type to subface elevations. We can leave everything else as it was for the superface model. Click on the process button and Rockworks generates the grid file for the bottom of Aquifer 1. Notice that the grid models are now listed within the project manager window that is located along the left side of the main Rockworks screen. We are now ready to generate an arsenic model that is confined within aquifer number one. Now that the grid files have been created, we can generate our arsenic model in the borehole manager and specify the grid files as the upper or lower surfaces for filtering the model. Under the T data menu, select Model. Click on the Create New Model button and choose Arsenic from the T data track box. We will now leave the rest of the filtering options unchecked. Next, click on the gray colored solid model options button and the solid modeling options box will appear. In the solid modeling option box, select the inverse distance anisotropic button. Under the model constraints section, check the upper surface box and in the grid model window, Browse to and select the Aquifer 1, 2, 14, 2007 top grid file. Also, check the lower surface box in the model constraint section and select the Aquifer 1, 2, 14, 2007 base grid file to constrain the bottom of the model. This will null out or make nodes in the solid model that lie above our top surface or below our bottom surface disappear within the display. We will choose a buffer size of 1 for this model. This setting defines how close to the constraining surface the filtering is to occur. A setting of 0 filters the solid model as closely as possible to the grid surface. 
Depending upon the vertical resolution of the mod file, this can sometimes allow voxels or nodes to poke through the filtering surface. A setting of 1 will add a distance equivalent to one vertical node from the filtering, thus creating a buffer between the model and the grid. Click on the OK button to save these settings. To finish our configuration, we will select Create Three-Dimensional Diagram Slash Plot Logs and Reference Cage. Click on the Process button and a three-dimensional model of arsenic concentrations in Aquifer 1 is generated. Notice how our clipped or constrained model differs from an unconstrained model using the same data for both models. In an unconstrained model, the data is extrapolated to the full extent of the model dimensions. In our constrained or clipped model, any arsenic nodes outside of Aquifer 1 are not displayed. We can further constrain our model so that only areas with arsenic concentrations above 30 parts per million or some other value of our choice are displayed. In the list of items located just left of the image, double click on the word arsenic model and a rock plot 3D option box appears. In the ISO level area, we can slide the bar or we can directly type 30 into the ISO level value box and then click Apply. The display of arsenic concentrations will shrink, showing only areas above 30 parts per million. Decreasing the cutoff value to 15 parts per million results in a larger area where arsenic concentrations are greater than 15 ppm. Thank you for watching.